again, everybody. I'm Chris Mooneyham, and thanks for joining us this week for the weekly blog and my take. So, the college football season really kicked off this week. And on uh, Thursday night, yours truly experienced a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, so many times in life, we don't know when history is about to happen in, well, our personal lives, our professional lives, but especially my focus, of course, is in sports. And so we were very fortunate this week for those of us who have studied at the foothills of Kennesaw Mountain to see none other than the inaugural game in the history of Kennesaw State University football, that 56-16 win over East Tennessee State University. I am a Kennesaw man after all, been a part of my life every single year in one form or fashion, one way or another since 1992. My mother was a student there. Uh, I was a student there and graduated, of course, uh, as many of you out there know. Uh, I, I worked at the campus bookstore in charge of customer service at one point. I worked for many years at the off-campus bookstore, the general bookstore right across the street. Uh, and of course, for many years, I was the voice of the baseball team uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s, fortunate enough to cover two national championship games at the Division II baseball level. In one year, we were fortunate enough to be the voice of the Division II World Series. But my point is, like so many people who are tied to their universities, when you have these historic moments, boy, it swells a lot of pride inside of you. And we've been talking about football at Kennesaw State for quite some time. And of course, there are the natural comparisons. Could they be like Georgia Southern? Could we dream of that type of success at the FCS level? Georgia Southern, for those of you who maybe are not aware, since the mid-1980s to uh, current day, well, technically through 2000, I think it was, played in eight national championship games with six championship game wins? Or would they suffer the same fate of their brethren just to the south, Georgia State, who is, well, struggling in their days, not just at FCS, but now that they are, of course, in the FBS level. Kennesaw State got off to a great start, 56-16, and we'll have high hopes about what they can do in the Big South Conference this year, and I'm telling you right now, I think they could be third in that conference, but we'll also temper our expectations and not hope that not not believe that they'll be top 24 this year and make this national tournament playoff at the FCS level. No, what I want to focus on is something that I've talked about for quite some time. The importance in recruiting and closing the gate in the state of Georgia. Something that Mark Richt has been very successful at. Something that Georgia Southern has been very successful at. And something that Paul Johnson at Georgia Tech has now become quite dominant at, quite frankly. If you check out Kennesaw State's roster, they have 91 kids. Now, I'll say that again, not just for dramatic broadcaster impact, but for purpose, of course. 91 kids on the KSU roster are Georgia natives. 91. That's an absolutely incredible number. And we've talked about for quite some time, those of us in the media that knew the football team was coming, even before the football team was coming, that if they could do that, get that second tier type player in the state of Georgia, because again, let's, let's be honest, it's an FCS school and there's no shame in that, but it's not Georgia and it's not Georgia Tech. But if they could pull some of the kids that Georgia Southern usually gets, that App State usually gets, that would just as soon go to Troy or Southern Alabama or perhaps to even Kentucky or Vanderbilt even or some of these other programs out west and East Carolina out east somewhere like that you know what I mean these second tier type players that would go to the SEC and never play or go to a lower FBS school and play only their last two years or would go FCS to a major FCS and dominate. Instead, they're coming to Kennesaw State. They're not going out to Carrollton to play at West Georgia at Division II. They're not going down to Georgia Southern to play in low FBS because maybe they don't want to be out in the country. Nothing against Georgia Southern. I love Georgia Southern, in fact. But maybe they don't want to go down to South Georgia. Maybe they want a little more action. But maybe they don't want to go downtown and live downtown commute back and forth if they don't live downtown and play at Georgia State. No, 
the best option for a little bit of rural and a little bit of city, well, that's Kennesaw State. And they've closed the gate on those second-tier players in just year one. Not only have they closed the gate on those second-tier players, but they're getting players from major programs in this state, programs that churn out some of the best high school talent year in and year out. Just off the top of my head, and I will freely admit that as a broadcaster, bad job broadcaster, I should have counted the amount of kids that have come from, say, Sandy Creek. But just off the top of my head, if you look at it right now, Kennesaw State has four kids, I think. I think four kids right now, now eh, maybe it's three. I can only think of three, but I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, and that's why I'm saying four, from the Sandy Creek Patriots program at the high school level here in the state of Georgia. A perennial power. And that's just the thing. If you know your high school football here in the state of Georgia, and so many of you out there watching right now do, I'm sure, you'll recognize so many of these names. In fact, you'll recognize so many of the names that performed very, very well in a 56-16 victory over East Tennessee State in their inaugural ball game. Be ready for a KSU team that is certainly going to win six games this year, folks, and they may even be a seven-win team, potentially third place in a very tough Big South Conference. Until next week, I'm Chris Mooneyham for my take.